Good morning and welcome to our service of morning prayer for this first Sunday in Lent. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image, to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me by saying the even-numbered verses of Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame, but let the treacherous be shamed and frustrated. Make me to know your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation, for you have I hoped all the day long. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions, but think on me in your goodness, O Lord, according to your steadfast love. Gracious and upright is the Lord, therefore shall he teach sinners in the way. He will guide the humble in doing right, and teach his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The reading is taken from first letter of Peter, chapter 3, reading verses 18 to the end of the chapter. For Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit, through whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison, who disobeyed long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In it, only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. And this water symbolises baptism that now saves you also, not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a good conscience towards God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand, with angels, authorities and powers in submission to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in the Lent Canticle, a song of humility. Come, let us return to the Lord, who has torn us and will heal us. God has stricken us and will bind up our wounds. After two days he will revive us, and on the third day will raise us up, that we may live in his presence. Let us strive to know the Lord, his appearing is as sure as the sunrise. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. O Ephraim, how shall I deal with you? How shall I deal with you, O Judah? Your love for me is like the morning mist, like the dew that goes early away. Therefore I have hewn them by the prophets, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For loyalty is my desire, and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Reading from the Gospels, Mark 1, verse 9 through to 15. The Baptism and Testing of Jesus At that time Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals, and angels attended him. And Jesus announces the good news. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We say the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. 
and you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts now and always be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. And so we've arrived at Lent, a time when we look at our priorities and make sure we're on the right track. It's about trying to truly be the people of God. Lent is not so much a negative time as a positive one, a time when we check that we aren't going astray. It can partly be summed up in the psalm we've heard read. Verse 4 of Psalm 25 says, Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. And our Gospel reading will also help us. In the first few verses from St Mark, we heard about the baptism of Jesus, the descent of the Holy Spirit, and the voice of God. It would seem as if everything is wonderful. But immediately, the same Spirit drives Jesus into the wilderness. The very spirit who came upon Jesus at his baptism now drives him out for his test. It's all rather sudden and unnerving, as it's written in St Mark's Gospel. There is a sense here, not so much of Jesus' unwillingness to go, but of the urgency that he should do so. It's his own talents and abilities that will be used to tempt Jesus. In this life, it's impossible to escape temptation. But one thing is sure, temptations aren't sent to make us fail, they can actually strengthen us. We need to remember that temptation itself isn't wicked, it's our response to it that's all important, because it's all about choice and decision making. Wickedness only gets the upper hand when we choose or decide to take the lower road and miss our target. When we're a couch potato, or lazy and fail to use our talents and abilities, temptation has wound itself around us and taken away our eagerness to serve our Lord. Temptation actually helps us. It can strengthen our purpose, refocus our mindset, and help us to choose a better way of living. It only becomes sin when we lower our aims, choose a way without God, and when we live below our potential. In the wilderness, Satan tempted Jesus, Satan meaning the adversary or the one who's against us. Another word for Satan is diabolos, which means that which throws apart or that which divides, all of which suggests separation and ultimately separation from God. We really must respond to temptation by making up our minds and committing ourselves to follow God's ways. For Jesus, at this point in our Gospel, the time had come for decision and commitment, and following the visits of Satan, Jesus would ask himself, Who am I? What am I called to do? And how will I do it? Questions we may well find ourselves answering when we're unsure what to do and when to do it. This time of hardship and spiritual conflict is not an accident or even merely a regrettable necessity. It's planned by God. And as Jesus goes through it, he will have the support of not only the Divine Spirit, but also angels to look after him. On the other side, there is Satan, the arch enemy of the purposes of God, and the wild beasts who represent danger and hostility. So Jesus, newly declared to be the Son of God, now faces up to the implications of that role with battles against evil 
but with the help of the Holy Spirit and the angels. Lent challenges us to remove some of our safety nets, and most of us do that, but in very small ways. We give up alcohol, chocolate or coffee, and how frighteningly hard it can be to do without even such inessential luxuries. We can use the idea of gardening to help us to understand a little more clearly. There's a tale about a man who left his garden to grow naturally. And when people asked him why it was such a mess, he answered, I was leaving it to God. God won't do for us the things he's given us the ability to do. If we want a good garden or a good life, we have to work at it. With the garden, if you want flowers, it's no use filling the beds with vegetables. You get out what you put in. In fact, in this case, you'll get more because you'll also get weeds. If you leave your life to run itself, you too will get weeds, and that includes temptations. Gardens and life need regular, tender, loving care. Lent is a time for looking at what you have and making improvements. Here's an example of that. In the garden, some plants need splitting to give them more room to grow. You can often give away the extra plant to someone else, so both of you and the plant benefit from that action. Giving is important. We need to learn how to give. And I'm going to put in an aside here. One very important gift you can give to someone is to tell them about God and how he's affected your life. But the word evangelism often scares us and we don't feel equipped to do this work for God. A gardener learns to know what will grow and what won't. He or she takes the soil and the weather conditions into account and works with them to grow the best crops or flowers possible. And as Christians, we need to work with God. Nothing is achieved without effort, without practice, without learning. If you want a good garden, you have to give it time and priority. And the same is true of our lives with God. Mark makes no attempt to link Jesus' baptism with his temptations, but we can take a meaning from it, in that to follow Jesus is both free and costly. God accepts us freely, and we know he's with us, but we live in a world where many don't welcome him or his ways, preferring to work things out for themselves. Mark also mentions that Jesus received the ministry of angels, the angels didn't keep Jesus from being tested by Satan, but they were there to assure him that God was watching over him, was with him, was loving him, was acting through him. Whenever we're tempted, troubled or distressed, we too are not alone. Divine help is at hand. God is with us. It's easy for some people to dismiss angels, but we need to remember that there's an awful lot about what goes on unseen around us as God works to help us that we don't understand. Christians over the centuries have talked about feeling protected, guided, provided for, sustained at times in their lives and God's angels could well be responsible for such experiences so much that we ought at least to keep an open mind about them. To summarise this whole temptation story we need to look at it as Jesus having to decide how he wanted to do his work for God. He was conscious of a tremendous task. He was also conscious of tremendous powers. God was saying to him, Take my love to people. Love them till you die for them. Conquer them by this wonderful love, even if you finish up on a cross. Satan was saying to Jesus, Use your power to blast people and obliterate your enemies. Win the world by might and power and bloodshed. God said to Jesus, set up a reign of love. Satan said to Jesus, set up a dictatorship of force. Jesus had to choose that day between God and the adversary of God. We know the choice he made and the example he was to go on to set us of the perfect way of life. May we too choose wisely when tempted by whatever we find confronting us. And let's keep this Lent positive, encouraging ourselves, knowing that we're loved by an amazing God 
doing all that we can to reflect that love to all those around us. Amen. We join together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Father, we pray for our church and ask that you protect us from religion, but strengthen us in faith. Heavenly Father, hear our prayer. Father, teach us that before we can love one another, we must learn to love ourselves. Like a ship without a rudder, we wander around aimlessly. 
when love is not with us and within us. Father, bestow your love on us, that we may grow in love, and love all. Heavenly Father, hear our prayer. Father, we pray in our need and in distress, but let us never forget to pray in the fullness of joy and in days of abundance, and give us contentment in the knowledge of the riches you have bestowed on us through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, hear our prayer. As we pray, remind us that within our prayers we seek your will be done. And as you hear our prayers, guide us to accept your will and your wisdom as to what is best for us. Heavenly Father, hear our prayer. Father, how do we distinguish that which is good from that which is not? in a world where the truth is hard to come by. Bestow wisdom on us to understand, to listen through your teachings and not to stray off of the narrow path you would have us follow. Heavenly Father, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's Collect Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ fasted forty days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are, yet without sin, give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your Spirit and, as you know our weakness, so may we know your power to save through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We join in the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.
may God, who made both heaven and earth, bless us. Amen. <laughs>